Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can change the appearance of your Actor Core characters via the iClone Substance tool. Actor Core is continually updating with new actors and motions, so be sure to check back frequently for the latest updates. The following workflow can be used with all characters since they've all been updated. All content can be downloaded via the Smart Gallery. To start, we're going to download this Actor Scan Sample Pack. Make sure that you select the iClone Target Tool preset and have iClone open, and then click on the Smart Gallery download. It will take your Smart Gallery a moment to sync, and from there, you'll be prompted to start the installation. If you've already downloaded an older version of your Actor Core content, please be sure to refresh your Smart Gallery and update when prompted in order to access this new workflow. Here we have one of the characters that we've downloaded in our viewport. So let's explore the Substance tool in iClone a bit. Everything we'll be working with here will be found in the Material tab of your Modify panel. Your basic texture maps in the Texture settings are Base Color, Bump slash Normal, Ambient Occlusion, Metallic, and Roughness. With the new update, all Actor Core characters will have a Resource Map section that includes a Color ID and RGB Mask Map, which allows different sections of the character and clothing to be adjusted separately. Underneath the Resource Map section, you'll also find the Substance section. This is where you'll load up your materialmodifier.i substance file. Please note that if you've updated your iClone to version 7.93 or higher, you'll be able to find this file in the Smart Gallery under the Media and Substance folder path. If you simply click and drag it onto your character, you'll see that it loads up in the Substance section. The default texture size is 512 by 512 which is ok if you need faster performance. However, for more detailed textures, you'll want to choose at least 2048 by 2048. You also want to ensure that you enable the RGB mask and color ID maps here. Once you do, you'll be able to edit the tweak section for both RGB and color ID below that. These two masks control different parts of the character. You can use the check RGB box to see which colors are assigned to which areas of the mesh. Generally, this will be assigned to the skin, hair, and teeth. The check color ID box does the same, except this is generally used for eyes, clothing, and accessories. With this character here, you can see that the model on the right shows the various colors used for the Color ID map. There are a variety here for clothing and accessories. Let's look at the Color ID map on the right, which allows for a maximum of 6 different colors. All others will be recognized as black, which is essentially the 7th color, and is controlled by the base section. You can tweak the values in the black section to modify areas that have not been assigned to other Color ID colors. Ok, let's look at some tips for adjusting all of these values now. If we open up the green section of our character here which is assigned to her dress, we can use the color, roughness, and metallic values to adjust the appearance of the dress separately. In this next example, the lenses of the glasses are assigned a magenta color. We can therefore go into that section and adjust the various color values to get a specific tint for something like stylish sunglasses and then proceed to metallic and roughness to modify their reflectiveness. In this example, we're focusing on the eyes of the character which contain an emissive map. This means that you can not only tweak the color, but also emphasize the glow effect as well. Note here that both the color and glow sections contain the hue parameter, so you need to coordinate between the two for the final effect. We normally use the luminosity parameter in the color group in order to tweak a character's skin color. Here you can see we're adjusting that value under RGB mask combined with a touch of saturation to get a darker yet still natural looking skin tone. You can also add a literal golden touch to your character's skin by further adjusting the metallic and roughness values in combination with slight tweaks to hue and saturation. This is also helpful when tweaking the result for export into other applications where the skin may appear too shiny due to shader differences. Sometimes for characters with darker skin, you'll want to darken the eyes a bit so there is less obvious contrast. In this color ID mask, the eyes are assigned with a red color, so we can proceed to that section to adjust the luminosity and darken them a bit. The same goes for the teeth, in this case assigned a blue color. The RGB mask allows you to utilize a gradient between two colors, 
which is used to make the character's hairline have a more natural blend. In this case, you'll see that the red color assigned to the skin is blended nicely with the green color, which is assigned to the hair. By adjusting the position and contrast parameters in the mask section at the bottom, you can determine the position and opacity of this border fade and how it affects each section. Aside from the position and contrast values, there is also a blur value at the top that you can tweak to give you further control over how the hairline blends into the skin. Finally, if you're satisfied with the tweaks and modifications you've made, you're ready for export. Before you do, it's important to ensure that you select the highest resolution export value before you do, if you want your character to look more detailed and realistic in the final production. To export, simply go up to File and then Export, and choose the Target Tool Application preset for your destination software, in order to export with optimized settings. And if you have an animation, make sure that you set the export range. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching. The new Substance tool now allows users to greatly expand their customization options for much better value with Actor Core assets. Be sure to check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.